So there we go. You see right there, Azure. Azure Printed Homes. LA has a huge housing crisis going on. It's so expensive to build here and so hard to build here that we were looking for something much more affordable. This basically 3D prints a whole complete self-standing structure in less than 24 hours. And so, and it's just not the walls, it's the floor and it's the roof as well too. But you're not just printing a house, you're also using recycled material, right? Yeah, so the material is 60% recycled plastic. Wow. It's a very cool kind of texture to it. Stucco has its own kind of brick. And this is almost like a vinyl record. It's got a very cool, you know, look and feel to it. But it doesn't, it feels more like, it doesn't feel like plastic. No, it, it doesn't. It feels more like a stucco. Or... Yes, yes. So this is, um, again, 60% recycled plastic, but then there's other additives we um, put to it, fiberglass, uh, carbon fiber, and some other things that really strengthen it and give it um, a really durable finish, um, especially the way it's printed in one monolithic print. And so we had to create a custom robot to be able to create something of this size. So the recycled plastic is from several different suppliers of ours who recycle plastic, whether it's plastic bottles or other plastic. We combine it with fiberglass, carbon fiber, and some other additives in a special mix that we found really does well with holding up and making a really durable structure. Using something that might be intended for landfills or incinerator or end up in our ocean, you know, reimagining what we can do with it to reuse it as a building material. So everything in white that you see around the outside, so the, the roof, the floor, the two all these either side are all printed in one go in one day. So we have effectively a shell that is formed ready to wire and plumb as quickly as day two. Our design allows us to add a little bit of customization so we can do the front and back wall in different ways. On this one, we have kind of a semi-glass front wall with a solid back wall. So the curve is kind of essential to the printing process? Or could you do a, a complete box and with right angles? We have the ability to create any sort of funky design that we want with a 3D printer. It made sense to have at least kind of, we couldn't create just a box. We wanted to obviously have some curves and, and radiuses in there to, to make it interesting. So once we had that radius, we decided that maintaining the same finish from the floor to the, to the wall to the ceiling is a, a clean and kind of cool look to create. Why did it take so long for somebody to make a printed, a recycled materials printed home? There's been some developments in the last few years in large scale 3D printing, like being able to extrude at the rate that we do. Like we, the fact that we can print one of these structures in a day is down to the fact that the extruder we have is one of the biggest in the world in terms of how much it can extrude to that level of precision over a period of time. In the future and with other designs, it's a printer, so we have a blank canvas in terms of what we can print and what we can create. So this, is, this gives you a bit of an insight into the cross-section, outer bead and inner bead, and then everything is kind of filled with insulation after we finish all the wiring and plumbing and whatnot. So it's actually not that thick? Like no, they're like a right? three-quarter of an inch thick on each side, but it's solid. <laughs> you can, uh, can kick the tires. Yeah, I can pick this up. So it's not that it's, heavy. It is. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's heavy. It's, yeah, if you can compare it to the same, like cement or steel, it's a lot lighter. Could you do a cast like that in cement? And move it around, probably not. Yeah. This we can, yeah. It's almost, it looks more, almost like a the component of a car. Yeah, what's funny, that's kind of what our ambition is. Like we want to combine, take the efficiencies of an assembly line from car manufacturing and then bring that to, to the building industry because we've been stuck in the dark ages for too long. So right now, this one, what's printed here? <clears throat> everything around the outside, the envelope is printed, everything in white that you see. Then the same as outside, these are cement board finished panels that we build off to the side of the assembly line and then uh, tilt up and stand in place once the print is completed. So this is a 180 square foot unit. We have a 
a living space. A bathroom, small kitchenette. This is uh, the mini bathroom. I'm sure it will fit. <laughs> so this is where the toilet will be. Vanity and then walk-in shower. Oh, so the shape of the shower is all already done. Yeah. Right now, you don't see the printing, but you see the shape of the printing. Exactly, yeah. This is a interior wall that was added once the printing has been completed. But yeah, this, this curvature that we see is all from what we've created with the printer. So you're keeping it as simple as possible. I mean, what's printed is almost the shape of the shower. It's the shape of the bathroom. It's the shape, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole concept of the system is just to try and simplify something that's become very complicated over the years. We can print interior walls. We can print exterior interior cladding. And all of our material is perfect for water environments. So perfect for a bathroom as well. But there's a lot more that can be printed and we'll, we'll add more as we go. So when it's finished printing, you get sort of a white box? <laughs> yeah, we have an open box. So these walls are stood up with the conventional paneling. And this forms the basis of all of our larger floor plans. So we do multiple modules connected together of this size. So it goes 180, 360, 540, 720, 900. And they can all be connected only from the side? In this orientation, yeah. This is like, you know, modular construction that's not 3D printed. This is for a different client that's in Palm Springs. But, uh, you know, steel frames here, combining one, two, three, four, five modules, how that could look, you know, and how the evolution of that to something that you can easily create within 24 hours. There's just so much more efficiency. So we're kind of bringing the best elements of 3D printing and modular construction together. So yeah, so here I can pull up. Here are ADU A series and D series because they come in two different roof structure styles. So for example, the A series is one of these more traditional A-frame style roofs. So the 3D printing is what you see here in the white, basically the two walls, the floor and the roof. And then people can customize their window options, how many they would like, so a glass slider option. How many window options are there? Are there so currently we're offering uh, a door and one large size window, okay. or one of these kind of tall, narrow peekaboo windows, or a glass slider. Okay. And then the same thing, you can pick for the facades, and then you can kind of customize that rear wall. So you could have a solid rear wall. You could add a window, one for the exterior, and then add a bathroom window. And then you can even choose to get the glass liner as well too. So this is different ways that people can configure it. Mm -hmm. So we want to make it as simple as possible of a process where someone can go online, choose their configurations, choose their floorings, and then they'll be able to choose even their kitchen style, the cabinet, countertop, and even the faucet, you can get a different color. And then same thing with the shower. Then even for the lighting, you can get recess cans or recess strip lights. As we offer solar panels, you can even get a battery in there. And then an HVAC unit as well too. And then there's this cloud bed feature where at the push of a button, it levitates up into the ceiling, reveals a seating area underneath. At the end, you get your pricing, 44350 cheaper than the price of some cars out there. And you can live in this, you can rent it out. So what we do is we do this in less than a day, and then we finish off the interior, mechanical, electrical, and then any kind of those finishings that people want on the interior. And this is all done in about a week and ready to be delivered on the back of a flatbed truck. So basically we were, you know, suggesting that order this on a Monday, we'll 3D print it in one day, finish it off and deliver it by Friday so you could be using it. And we weren't even considering necessarily selling something of this size, but we want to get something really affordable because that's something that we were hearing from a lot of people. So that's where $44,000 is the unit itself, but you still need to create that site plan, the foundation plan, get that foundation permit. And then as well, there's a delivery and in the installation cost. Okay. Okay. But the closer you are to our Culver City factory, and if you have a site that's easy for us to install this in, depending on the craning costs and things like that, it actually be, we sometimes sell people, take the starting price plus maybe add 20%, 25% but still a very affordable price for somebody to get a plug and play unit in their backyard or even on an empty piece of land.
So yeah, this would be your D series for obvious reasons. Shape, you mean D because it looks like a D. Exactly, a D and the A series, this A. And then huh. the D series, that looks yeah. like more like the capital D, yeah. Do you think people still want the gable roof? So there are people who are saying that for their area, they have to have something more traditional looking. We have people who say they want the more modern look. There's people who have said, can I get as much glass as possible? As time goes on, we want to be able to configure even more. I mean, that's the beauty of 3D printing. So we want to make it as unique as the person is who's living in it. You're printing with like what looks like clay. Yeah, but we can put any kind of coloring pigment inside it so we can finish any color you want, you can paint this on the exterior. 60% recycled. Uh, this part is 60% so recycled. So it's actually 70% right? so, because uh, some of the, I believe, fiberglass in it as well, too, is also recycled as well. And do you know what it's, what are you recycling? Like milk bottles or? Yeah, or? so there is uh, plastic bottles. It's a lot of the plastic that's, let's say, in people's cars and things like that. You know, some people have asked about whether it, heating up, you know, whether that would have any effect with it, but it's the same kind of plastic that is in your plastic bottle that's in the cars that do get heat and that have been shown to be safe. And this is a lot of things that aren't usually recycled, but we can start using it and using it for a good cause. You think people are ready for like a printed house? And when you say, I mean, you know, we are printed house, printing houses. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people these days are more concerned about affordable housing yeah. and What's a way that they can get something within their budget that looks good and that they can get built quickly? When they see something that they can go online, design themselves and create and we can print and deliver to them, that gets a lot of people excited. So the recycled plastic is a special mix that we found really does well with holding up and making a really durable structure that we've done advanced weatherization testing on, whether it's seismic or there are high winds, sun exposure, there's a UV stabilizer in here as well too. So it's very low maintenance structure. Basically every 15 years, it's like painting a house again. You just apply for a few hundred dollars a new UV coating on it, and it should last with no degradation from the sun for another 15 years. So we expect that these to last as long as traditional buildings. What do you use for a foundation? So this, this foundation- like, That's not the foundation. <laughs> this is, yeah, but it shows you how light these are. This is actually only 4,000 pounds, and the ADU inside is about 6,000 pounds. So it's very light. It's like a truck. Yeah, I mean, there are cars that are, uh, are heavier, heavier, right? Yeah. The electric Hummer is heavier than your ADU, maybe. Exactly, yeah. So these go on stem wall foundations that are easy connections to. It allows a little bit of a crawl space. It's basically a perimeter foundation. We have, if you like compare it with like a wood framed building, so we have an outer bead and an inner bead. This inner bead creates a geometry on the inside that allows us to have all of our raceways for wiring and for plumbing. Straight after that's been done, all of the voids that we've created are insulated with a recycled polymer as well. And that just creates a very sealed and very efficient structure for us to then finish on the inside. So we get like R30 on the walls, the roof and the floor on this unit. And then for other locations, we can increase that depth. It's just a modification to the print design and then because it's all printed in one go. It means that there's no real thermal bridging happening between our roof and our walls or a floor and our walls. And as I say, because they're so efficient, you're not wasting too much energy in having to heat and cool. Because of the envelope being... So sealed, yeah. There's not really anywhere for energy to escape because it's one monolithic print. Why did it take so long for somebody to make a recycled materials printed home? You know, why were people first printing with concrete or printing with other things? I mean, people still are. I mean, like, uh, there's been some developments in large scale 3D printing and the materials as well, like the advance, even just from our time in it, like this material is the first one that we printed with, but the pr material we're printing with now is like so much more um, superior. The consistency has probably always been the concern with recycled plastic but the method and means of recycling and the quality of the streams of recycled plastic that are being produced now are a much higher level. This product was uh, post-industrial. We're actually managing now to use a post-consumer stream. It's getting faster, right? I mean, I think there was always like Patagonia doing the recycled bottle. That's the actually, other benefit. This one. 
This is actually on the label on the back. It explains it's, it's actually pl yeah. plastic from bottles and stuff. Yeah. And a house, I think you may be the first house that's made from we are, yeah. <laughs> recycled plastic. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the benefit of not just using recycled plastic, but also of 3D printing is that we have like zero waste. We can regrind to a certain ratio, no more than 20%. We can mix that back in with our regular pellets and reuse it. So we're kind of starting this as just kind of like a proof of concept, but it can be a solution for like so many other things other than a backyard structure.